Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chucky Chen, and today we are speaking with... Dipo Arioya. Hey, hey, Dipo, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. So, uh, where are you based, what do you do, and how did you get started on Android? So, um, I'm originally from London. I was born and raised. My parents are Nigerian. Mm -hmm. um, I studied CS back there. And out of college, I moved to San Francisco and have been working ever since. Um, my first introduction of Android was in college. Um, I started a consultancy firm with my friends. And wow. we just wanted to learn how to build apps. And If I want to learn how to build apps, that's not the route I would take. Or like, you know, read some books and stuff. You're like, I'm going to start a company. I had a lot no of... No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not as great as it sounds. I had a lot of motivation. I had a friend that was an iOS developer and I wanted to be different. And <laughs> he got a lot of success with an app and I, and I wanted to I try something see. else. So I remember it's my... It's more like a little competition going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm very competitive at heart. But um, yeah, I remember my first step was literally just creating a an app for a local society in the university. And I remember I was in Nigeria on holiday mm -hmm. and the internet was really bad. And I was learning how to like code about like Stack Overflow and stuff. But <sighs> we've come far since then. Um, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's how I jumped into it. Then yeah. I moved to San Francisco. I actually worked as a front-end developer for my first year, mm -hmm. but then now working as a full-time Android, Android developer. Great, awesome. Yeah, so we are here because you are going to be giving a talk at 360 End Up, right? Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> and the talk is about our favorite thing ever, fragments. I know, best thing ever. Well, I'm not sure how exactly this conversation will go, but mm -hmm. let's talk about fragments. So I guess first question, mm -hmm. do you think that fragment is a good thing or bad thing? I think it depends on how you're using it. Right? <laughs> that's, the, that's the right thing to say. I knew. It depends. Because yeah. for me, um, ever since my first app, I was always using fragments, you know, I think with the view pages when I first got introduced to fragments. Right. And I didn't even know there was a big problem with them. I didn't know there was another way to do things because, you know, this is something that Google literally told you to use. Mm -hmm. And then it's only until like I started reading around and, and getting deeper into the fragments e ecosystem when I realized that, damn, there's actually some some aspects of fragments that are set up for de developer failure. So Can you it's tell like, me one aspect of it? We won't, you know, trash it too hard, but just I one. think <laughs> the biggest problems came before, like, the support fragment manager was really pushed on us. And mm. we used to actually have a lot of bugs that weren't even our fault. And right. debugging the fragment manager back then, like, with transactions was, was a pain. Yeah. But, and it's really hard when mm -hmm. you don't know whether you are the problem, problem. Exactly. <laughs> or somebody else is. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So so that is kind of like, you know, the dark side of fragments. But <laughs> what what looks good about fragments? What's great about fragments is that they a lot of a lot of developers are already used to activities, right? So we right. know how activities work. Mm -hmm. And the idea of a fragments for me when I started using it was like, oh, I can have multiple activity like UI components in on a single screen at a time. Right. And there wasn't really another way to do that, like have that like straight out of the box, right? So you got your back, back stack um, compatibility straight out of the box. Yeah. You have your life cycle and I'm like, okay, I can easily tie into my activity life cycle and still, you know, have the things that I want to do, such as, you know, draw my views on screen, right. et cetera. So that's one of the good things. Um, mm -hmm. But the funny thing is that's also one of the bad things because it's like, oh. These things, you realize it's actually very similar to an activity and then you start to get lost into this discussion where it's like, okay, when do I use an activity? When is a fragment? What actually is the difference? Um, so that's a problem. That's probably, I think that's what really causes the debate. And every time you ask someone, what, what is a fragment? Why do you use a fragment? You always get a different answer. Yeah. Even the answer I might give today might be one I might different to what I gave like last year or oh, next year. Oh, <laughs> exactly. not just a different person, but like you Same person. Same person. Same person, yeah. exactly. Um, also, like the fragment um, base classes, extend you can extend it. Um, you can use dialog fragments as well. So, <gasps> my which, you you don't like those? Oh. I don't like dialog fragments. Ooh, we need to talk about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's just something that feels familiar, right? So you can go to a different company into a different code base, right. and you see a fragment, and you're like, okay, at least I kind of know what they were trying to achieve with this this whole modularization of you know our UI components. Right and tying into the activity life cycle. So it's more about like, okay, this is something that's familiar. Yeah. That's why well, I, yeah. so I guess disclaimer, <laughs> I don't like that off from it because I'm using it incorrectly. Oh, right. So what happened was I have a network call mm -hmm. and it came back after the activity, like when I know. 
I know, I know, it's my fault. Um, <laughs> it went away, and then the, the dialogue fragment tried to attach to a non-existent activity, and it blew up on me. Yes. I said, but that took me a long time to like figure out what was happening because all you say is like, oh, stay lost, oh, yeah. no good, right? No. So that, that's when I first started like this fragment thing. I'm not sure about it anymore. So, so that's yeah. a very common problem. It's one I was facing last year as well. The illegal state exceptions yeah. where. Where you know where 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 we're trying to make fragment transactions when our fragment no longer even is attached to an activity, right? And that's another problem. It's like Google never really, or the Android community doesn't really have a you know a standardized way, especially like a few years ago, as to how to make asynchronous calls and deal with the fragment lifecycle, which depends on the activity lifecycle, and then things just get way too complicated. Yeah. Um, but there are ways now, like I think, to you know overcome you know that problem you mentioned. You probably want to avoid um, asynchronous callbacks in general in the fragment lifecycle, but sometimes you have to do these things. Well, and network call. I know, right. Exactly. <laughs> How do you avoid that? I know, you, you need network calls. Um, yeah. But, you know, luckily with, you know, the, the new architecture components from last year, we have... Right. We're starting, we're, starting, we're starting to see the light, you know, okay. with, with network calls and fragments and yeah. managing data across, you know, these different components. So yeah. yeah. So let's say today you are going to write a new app, brand new, no constraints, no baggage, no legacy. Mm -hmm. How would you structure it? Are you going to use a single activity with multiple fragments? All activities, no fragments. Like how 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 would you mix and match whatever you have learned over the years? Very good question. Um, yeah. So for me, I'm never someone that's just like, I need to do it one way, right? Okay. I need to think about what is the app I'm building. If it's, if it's a project solely for myself and the I'm, and I'm yeah. the only one working on it, I will do what I'm most comfortable with, mm -hmm. which will most likely be a single activity with a multiple fragment. Actually, it depends. I might actually use multiple activities as well. It depends on the complexity of the application. Okay. Um, but to give some more context, um, like if I'm working on a, on a larger school application that's going to have loads of um, UI components or like views, that need to be reused across multiple different tablets, phone screen right. sizes, and to start thinking on, okay, uh, maybe fragments might be a good choice here because that's their, that's their, that's what they're selling to me, right? I can reuse. But these that's components. how it got started. Exactly. That right. was the problem it's trying to solve. So if you're not going to even bother with tablets, then then. <laughs> why? Why use fragments, right? Yeah. And that's a good thing. I've never actually built a tablet tablet app, right? Same. So. So it's but like, like you know, back <laughs> in the day when they came out and I was like, yeah. good citizen, it's yeah. like, just in case I'm going to move it to the tablet, let me use fragments. So now every single activity in my app is like nothing inside. It's like two lines because it just include the layout file, which include the fragment. And, yeah. and I'm like, okay, let's actually think about why before. I mean, that was a one big lesson. Okay. I think before when the Android world was simpler, it's just like, I'll oh, just follow whatever Google oh, come yeah, up yeah, with yeah. because that will be the right way. Mm -hmm. And then now as it gets more complex, I realized that no, just because Google came up with Fragment doesn't mean they're solving my problem. Yeah. So I was blindly using it. So that was good that you mentioned. No, definitely. Yeah, if and you need like tablets, then it probably makes sense. And then obviously, like as you become a more experienced developer, you start thinking about testing. Okay, how do I make my code testable? Yeah. And this is where you realize that Fragments shouldn't be even doing too much anyway because they're not... Well, either not, activity or fragments. Yeah, either of them, exactly. Yeah. So you're not, you have to start looking at more advanced, you know, architectures right. such as, you know, the MV, MM, MV, my God, model, view, view model, Get the back of the and <laughs> all, these, all these little cool, fancy words. So, yeah. I mean, I still see myself as someone that's learning, like, I don't have the right, right. answer. I mean, though, you know, all those, <laughs> like, um, different architecture patterns, I think they apply to both activity or Fragment because that's just the yeah, view. Exactly, in, just, yeah, exactly. The, the V in MVP or MVVM or MVI. Mm -hmm. Actually, I haven't done MVI, so mm -hmm. I just assume that the I V have never is heard the same thing. <laughs> uh, that's Viper. Like, okay. I, can, I can bring out all the alphabet stuff, but I have, I've only done MVP okay. and I'm learning MVVM uh, yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think um, that can interchange with either, one, either fragment or activity. Exactly. Good. So um, one other thing that I don't know if you looked into already is like when this Google I/O came up with the um, navigation editor, okay. which um, basically is a visual way to manage all the transition between screens, mm -hmm. and each screen as of now is mm -hmm. a fragment. So mm -hmm. I was looking at it and I thought, 
Oh, they're really pushing the fragment train again. So, did you look into the... So, I've not looked into this specific thing, yeah. but I've also noticed that every year Google tries to re-push fragments and, you know, rebrand them. I know, it's like the zombie that just and keep, like, I'm like, I'm from the graves. And it's, it's really funny, when you actually yeah. look at these Google I.O. talks, you see a lot of developer frustration, where I was like, yeah. listen, we need, we just need a whole new system, we need to kill fragments. Some people are still asking for like just allow multiple activities on one screen, you know. So it's like right. I appreciate Google giving us more options, and I think that's what Android has always been about. It's yeah. like Google's not really going to tell you exactly how you should build your app, how you need to do things, right. give you options, give you best practices, and then as a community, we need to you know try to find the right answer. Um, yeah. But in regards to the nav navigation editor, I've not actually okay. looked too deep into that. Yeah. So just one final thing, I just want to tie it in back to the title of your talk because right. it's called Fear No Fragment. So at which point you, you realize that, that it's okay, even though it's complex and different people give you different answers, I don't need to fear. Like, where's yeah. the turning point where you're I, I feel like, okay with fragments? I feel like the turning point was probably earlier this year or, no, or the end of last year when um, I was building a... I was working on an application and we're trying to support um, uh, persistent web app in the background. And we already had a lot of fragments in place. I had to figure out a way to allow us to transition seamlessly between these fragments mm. and to communicate with this web app that we need to show and hide. And that's when I really got deep into like the whole fragment transaction area, which is the part which always used to scare me when it came yeah. to the back stack. And I'm still like, try not to touch it. <laughs> like and it's like, and then I started to obviously read more into, you know, that fragment debate, like what the actual, what are people actually scared of? And mm -hmm. it's funny, a lot of these things are from like 2016, 2015. Um, and like I said, a lot of them are due to Google or the Android ecosystem um, framework where there were a lot of bugs, like actually a lot of oh, bugs. And I, see. I feel like now there are, they're not, there's definitely not as much bugs, you know, we are using the support fragment manager now. Yeah. And you just, through experience, you just learn, okay, how do I, I've made this mistake before. Right. How do I ensure that, you know, I don't make the same mistakes again? So yeah, going through that project really helps well, me. Yeah, so the, basically you have realized that the fragment world has improved since, yeah. you know, all those people crying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, still the dialogue thing is the main thing, which now I learned. Oh, really? No, 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 no. Don't blame fragments. It's not fragments. <laughs> it's your problem. You're doing things in the wrong part of the life cycle, which is another part of Android yeah. that's complicated. Oh, yeah, but 100%. It's, it's very encouraging to know that, you know, you've gone through and realized that a lot of it is historical. It's just yeah. a lot of historical, but it's also, it comes down to complexity, right? When you're dealing with child fragments and you had loads of yeah. nested child fragments and you're starting to do a lot of things and you're dealing with that activity life cycle, which is actually not um when it comes to the activity yeah and, uh, it doesn't match up it doesn't always match yeah. up so it's like so. It's, it's all down to you and how you um right. you know design your 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 projects really but great and i assume you'll be sharing a lot of tips and tricks in your talk definitely so, that's the plan so people should watch that when that comes out <laughs> thank all you right. very much so thank you so much for speaking with us today thank you for having me and uh if people want to follow your good work on the internet where can they find you you can find me on most social media, Twitter, Instagram, um, my first and last name, which is Dipo Arioya, D-I-P-O-A-R-E-O-Y-E. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say. yeah, go ahead. All Thank right you. then. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye.